Well, it's a great pleasure to welcome you as always to our monastery here in Liverpool, to the Redemptorist House of Bishop Eaton, and to celebrate with you this weekend the wonderful feast of All Saints. Now, Freddie loved this feast because he understood that it was a feast for everybody, including himself. And I want to illustrate that. By the way, we're going to sing a couple of verses of the great hymn for all the saints, if those of you want to get ready to do some singing. Um, but just to explain, and I'm going to use the second reading even before we begin our Mass, because this is how Freddie got to understand that he is already a child of God. This is what St. John says in his first letter. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children. And that is what we are. And then it goes on, my dear people, we are already the children of God. But what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he really is. Surely, everyone who entertains this hope must purify himself, must try to be as pure as Christ. So Freddie got the message. He realized that... Um, he was already a child of God. And uh, I'm always stressing this when I do baptisms. I remind everybody, here are these children, usually, thanks be to God, they're lovely, healthy children, little babies. Um, and I remind the people that, of course, they're full of life. But now we're giving them this life which will go on forever. The eternal life that Jesus won for us. The life of the resurrection. And, of course, Freddie also began to understand that uh, some of his relatives and friends who died, we think of that uncle of his, if you remember, who died saving somebody else's life, that uh, our prayer now, of course, and our belief is that these good people are, are ready to become saints. They won't be canonized necessarily by the church. Um, we couldn't have everybody. We spend all our lives trying to canonize everybody, but we hold up before us those people who show us what it means to be a faithful follower of Jesus. But our prayer is that our loved ones uh, have also become saints in heaven. And we're celebrating the feast of all the saints in heaven. And of course, we hope one day that we're going to be with them. And uh, Freddie got that message very clearly. And of course, that's what we're celebrating in a very big way today. So we won't have a homily today as such. We're just going to do some more singing um, and enjoy ourselves on this lovely feast day. So let's have a couple of verses of For All the Saints. For all the saints who from their labors rest who thee by faith before the world confessed. Thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Alleluia, Alleluia. O may thy soldiers, faithful, true, and bold, Fight as the saints who nobly fought of old, and win with them the victor's crown of gold. Alleluia, Alleluia. O blessed communion, fellowship divine, we feebly struggle they in glory shine yet all are one in thee for all are thine alleluia alleluia in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the lord be with you and with your spirit so let's pray that we may be worthy to become saints and that we will Recognize our true dignity even here and now as children of God. We come to our Lord, obviously, as we always do, recognizing that we are weak at times and we need his strength and his forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, 
in excelsis Deo. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. In excelsis Deo. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse, or the book of Revelation. And here we're listening to St. John again, having this amazing dream about how things are going to be. I, John, saw another angel rising from where the sun rises, carrying the seal of the living God. He called in a powerful voice to the four angels whose duty it was to devastate land and sea. Wait before you do any damage on land or at sea or to the trees, until we have put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Then I heard how many were sealed, a hundred and forty-four thousand out of all the tribes of Israel. After that I saw a huge number, impossible to count, of people from every nation, race, tribe and language. They were standing in front of the throne and in front of the Lamb, dressed in white robes, and holding palms in their hands. They shouted aloud, Victory to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels who were standing in a circle round the throne, surrounding the elders and the four animals, prostrated themselves before the throne and touched the ground with their foreheads, worshipping God with these words, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and strength to our God for ever and ever. Amen. One of the elders then spoke and asked me, Do you know who these people are, dressed in white robes, and where they have come from? I answered him, You tell me, my Lord. Then he said, These are the people who have been through the great persecution." and they have washed their robes white again in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Such are the men who seek your face, O God. Such are the men who seek your face, O God. The Lord's is the earth and its fullness, the world and all its peoples. It is he who set it on the seas, on the waters he made it firm. Such are the men who seek your face, O Lord. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The man with clean hands and pure heart, who desires not worthless things. Such are the men who seek your face, O Lord. He shall receive blessings from the Lord and reward from the God who saves him. Such are the men who seek him, seek the face of the God of Jacob. Such are the men who seek your face, O Lord. Well, we've had the second reading, so we move to the Alleluia. <coughs> Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Come to me, all you who labour and are overburdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. 
The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Well, we've got the Beatitudes today, the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount in St. Matthew, and here is the great charter of Christian living. Uh, these are the things that will get us to heaven. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill. There he sat down and was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak. This is what he taught them. Happy are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy the gentle. They shall have the earth for their heritage. Happy those who mourn. They shall be comforted. Happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right. They shall be satisfied. Happy the merciful. They shall have mercy shown them. Happy the pure in heart, they shall see God. Happy the peacemakers, they shall be called children of God. Happy those who are persecuted in the cause of right, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I said we, we wouldn't have a homily today. Um, in actual fact, the Archbishop has written us a pastoral letter. Um, now, we're making this available for you. I think it's much better, really, if you read this yourselves than I read through it now, because you can take your time and take in what the Archbishop is saying. Um, certainly, the Archbishop is very much uh, on the ball in the sense that he's talking to us about the great events that are unfolding around us. As you know, there's this mighty meeting in Glasgow. Uh, lots of the leaders of the world are, are meeting in Rome at the moment and, and meeting the Pope as well. Um, so the Archbishop bases his reflection on the book of Genesis. God saw all that he had made and it was very good. But then he goes on to remind us of, of all the destructive things that are happening because of global warning, the floods in places and the earthquakes in Haiti, the, uh, the problems about global warning across the world, and he done his statistics here about um, the concentration of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere is the highest it's been in human history. Um, so he says, what's happening to the beautiful world? Um, and he quotes Pope Francis, and he goes on reflecting with us uh, about the events that are coming up and reminds us that while the great leaders of the, the, the world have got to do their bit, we've also got to do our bit. And uh, he's saying that we can put pressure on the government, we could write to our MPs or our local councillors and so on. He also reminds us of a few practical things and he's got some bullet points, uh, using public transport, cutting down on the amount of meat we eat, avoiding single-use plastic, buying locally produced food and recycling waste and so on. Um, and he says he wants us all to take note of CAFOD's Live Simply program uh, and the award that they offer with that. Well, I know that uh, our school have been uh, looking into all those things and indeed have won some awards and so on. So let's thank God for all that is going on. Um, and I leave you with that. There are links um, for this on our website, on the bulletins, and uh, probably knowing Margie, there'll be a link uh, for, for the bishop's uh, pastoral letter with this Mass. But can I also draw your attention to another uh, wonderful prophetic message, um, and that's from Pope Francis himself. I don't know whether you, you noticed, but uh, yesterday morning, um, Pope Francis happened to do Thought for the Day on Radio 4. I just picked up the news and I listened to him. It was an unusually long thought for the day, but obviously they thought it was really important. Um, and again, I'm not going to read it to you all, but uh, Pope Francis has this wonderful way uh, also of getting in touch with our sensitivities and sensibilities. I mean, early on he said, we've lost our sense of security and are experiencing a sense of powerlessness and loss of control over our lives. But again, uh, he really is leading the way here uh, from a spiritual point of view, trying to get us to reflect. And again, you, you will find links to the Pope's message uh, on the website to the BBC of, of let us have the, the text of that. So there are a couple of things that um, we, can, we can reflect on. Let's uh, make our act of faith and then bring all these intentions in our prayers to God our Father. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered unto Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So now let us pray with the whole world that this meeting of so many of those who influence our world will be successful, will help us to treasure our world and transform it so that it becomes a wonderful place to inhabit again. And let us pray that we won't be so selfish as to continue the kind of destruction that has begun. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those people, Lord, who are suffering the effects of climate change or indeed suffering for all sorts of other reasons through the tyranny of other human beings, through the selfishness of other human beings and indeed at times through our own selfishness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As you know, we try to remember particular intentions that have been um, brought to my attention. Um, I'm not going to go through the list of, of those we've been praying for the last few weeks. The, the sick lists are there again in the bulletins uh, and on the websites. Uh, but I would ask you to continue to pray for Joan Ware. Um, and then on the funeral front, we have three funerals coming up at Bishop Eaton again. Uh, Ashley Flynn will be this coming Wednesday. David Bamber will be at half past two on Thursday. Um, there's good reason for that because his daughter's come over from Canada and, and obviously um, uh, delaying over here for too long could be quite difficult, so we've managed to get that fairly early. And then Agatha Fleming's funeral will be on Tuesday the 9th of November. Could I also commend to you the anniversaries of Peter King, Jerry, Mac Jerry McBride, Peter Taylor, Len Mayer, Peter Stranach, Anne Cullen, Josie Garrity, and Angela Mullen, either anniversaries of death or of birthdays. Lord, you know them. We entrust them to you. We ask that they may have eternal rest and be counted among the saints in heaven. And we pray for those who grieve for their lost ones, asking you, Lord, to comfort them. We beg the prayers of Our Lady for all our prayers. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant that what we have asked in faith we may indeed obtain through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. My brothers and sisters, pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he went and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, give praise to his name. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, from our bishop, all the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we rejoice as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Now, let's offer each other a sign of peace, safely and lovingly. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. And I'm conscious again that um, many of you won't have been able to receive communion sometimes for a very long time now. Let's be united, at least with this prayer of spiritual communion. And let's hope that you sense that our Lord is dining with you wherever you are. Here is the children's version. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in Holy Communion. I love you and would love to receive you now, but since this is not possible, please come to me and fill me with all the blessings and graces I need to cope with everything that is going on. Unite us all and give us the peace which you promised only you can give. Amen. As I cleanse the chalice after communion today, just remind you of how special this chalice is to me, given to me from the people of Peru through that wonderful sister friend of mine, Sister Patricia McLaughlin. We had a wonderful hours chat the other evening. We finally caught up with each other again, and she's out there. The pandemic's still a real issue there. They're going into their summer holidays now, but the children haven't been back at school having to learn on WhatsApp and so on, but she's hoping they'll be able to come back in February. So people all over the world are still struggling. Let's pray for one another fervently. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. You are my Lord. Well, as you can see, it's a very sunny afternoon. And it's quite difficult to get somewhere where the sun isn't in my eyes, so I'll try over here, I think, for the final prayer today. Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland, through Christ our Lord. Amen. By way of notices, I really would like to draw your attention to a wonderful effort made by Much Woolton School to collect a huge amount uh, for the Harvest Festival. Obviously, we haven't been able to have the usual mass with them, but uh, their gifts are going out to those in need. And I know that um, Anne O'Neill, our administrator down there, has managed to get everything distributed. So uh, we're hugely grateful uh, to the school for that commitment. And we're hugely grateful to all our schools for the various initiatives that they're taking. Uh, another good bit of news is that on Monday week, uh, Father Tim King, uh, remember Father Tim should have been ordained here uh, a while ago, but because of the pandemic, he ended up being ordained in Rome. But at last he's able to come home and he's going to celebrate Mass in Bishop Eaton 
at half past six on Monday week, on the 8th of November. And there'll be a little reception. I think we'll probably have it in the house. Um, the Focolari team will be around, and uh, those of you who wish to come, you'd be very welcome. So I hope you have a good week. Uh, back after half term, I hope that things have gone well for everybody. Um, and let's just rejoice in this wonderful feast. And let's pray that there will be a hugely successful meeting in Glasgow. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God. And we'll sing the last verse of that wonderful hymn. And when the strife is fierce, the warfare long Steals on the ear the distant triumph song And hearts are brave again, and arms are strong Alleluia, 